What's up guys? With this video I want to start a new series of my tutorials about design patterns. In my opinion, every good developer should know design patterns, and also how and when to use them. If you're unfamiliar with this topic, I would recommend a great book already Head First Design Patterns. It's a very useful book and you will be surprised how easy and simple design patterns are explained there. The link to this book will be in the description to this video down below. Today I want to talk about one specific design pattern, Chain of Responsibility. It's not the most popular design pattern, but it's my favorite. If you are new here, like and subscribe. And if you like my videos, let me know what you want to see next in the comments. As always, the final code you can find on my GitHub repository. The link you will find in the description. Chain of Responsibility is a behavioral design pattern that lets you pass requests along with chain of processing objects, also called handlers. So, this pattern consists of a command object and group of processing objects. Each processing object decides either to handle the request or to pass it to the next processing object in the chain. You should use pattern chain of responsibility when more than one object may process a request. The processing object should be defined automatically. It's essential to execute several handlers in a particular order. The set of objects that can handle a request should be specified dynamically. This pattern has following benefits. Reduces coupling. Decouples the sender of the request and its receivers. Reduces complexity of your object because it doesn't have to know the chain structure and keep direct references to its members. Adds flexibility. Allows you to add or remove responsibilities dynamically by changing the members or order of the chain. Let's take a look at this pattern with a simple example. Imagine a situation when a customer wants to get information about some place. And for this he provides some input parameters, for example, name of this place or its coordinates. Technically speaking, we need an object location with some set of fields, for example, name, street, city, country, and coordinates. And there will be several handlers which will process a request. For example, it will be favorites handler, coordinates handler, and name handler. And processing order will be the same. Favorites handler will check customer's favorite places. Imagine it as a shortcut, like in Google Maps. Home or work, and behind each name there are coordinates of a real place. Coordinates handler gets location from Google Maps API by provided latitude and longitude. Name handler gets information from OpenStreetMaps API by place name. All these handlers implement the same interface, which has methods setSuccessor and process. SetSuccessor is called in order to create a chain. Process method is called to execute processing request. Each handler checks incoming request and decides to process it or not. So, favorites handler checks if request has a name and it is defined in a customer list of favorite places. Coordinates handler will process request with latitude and longitude. Name handler processes request only when name is present. It may happen that no handler can process a request. For this pattern, it's totally valid case and you should consider it during implementation. When customer sends a name for a place, like my home, Command object receives it and passes to first handler from the chain, which in our case is favorites handler. Ok, name is present in the request, so with next step this handler checks if place with such name is defined in a customer's list of favorite places. Let's say it's defined. Handler gets coordinates by name and sets them into request. Then it calls process method of next processing object in the chain. A request contains coordinates so coordinates handler also can process this request. Handler calls Google and fills all missing information in the request. And it calls process method of next handler. The last handler is name handler and it could process a request because name is present, but request already has all information and there is no need to do anything else. Processing is complete as there is no next processing object in the chain. To implement a chain of responsibility pattern in Symfony application, we should perform several steps. Define a command object as a service. Define each processing object as a service. 
add some custom tag to the service definition, for example, location handler. Add priority to the service to set desired order for processing objects. We should write a compiler path to work with service definition before service will be assembled in Symfony container during bootstrapping of application. You can read more information about compiler paths in the official Symfony documentation. The link you will find in the description block below this video. Create a new compiler path. Add it to the kernel class. In the compiler path, find all services tagged with our custom tag and sort services by priority. Get first handler from array and create a new alias object with this handler. It means that this service will be accessible for injection via our custom alias. Now iterate through all handlers, get next one and set it as a successor to previous handler. With this manipulation, each handler knows the next one. The chain is ready. Create a new class, it will be a location resolver. Inject first location handler there. Remember, we have defined an alias for this service. This class will have public method resolve location, which accepts location object and processes it. If location is not resolved by any handler, error will be thrown. Now we can test our implementation. For this, let's create a controller and inject location service. Define new action. Create location object from request. Ideally, Symfony form should be used here, but this is another topic. The link to forms tutorial you will find in the info box, somewhere on the right top corner. For demonstration purpose, I will use the realize the component. So, Call resolve location and pass location object. Wrap application exception with HTTP exception. And at the end, return JSON response. Define new route, and we are ready to test our implementation. By the way, sample project from GitHub with final code is tokenized and has xdebug, so you can easily run it locally and check execution step by step. OK, enable debugger. To send API requests, I use application Postman. In the body, I will send field name with my custom label. First, we stop in favorites location handler. As location is not yet resolved and it has a name, we go further. We get location data by name and set coordinates to the object. And we call next handler. Coordinates location handler receives location with name and coordinates and it gets full set of location data by latitude and longitude from Google. Location is marked as resolved, and we call next handler. Name location handler receives location, but it's already resolved, so it skips processing. We jump into location resolver, then into location controller, and finally generate response. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and now better understand pattern chain of responsibility. Thank you for watching.